Hello, Super Dean here, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club. And if you can tell, yes, I am full of cold. So we're going to see how this goes, if this is quite bad. Or if I mumble and stumble quite a lot, I might have to wait to play this game until my cold has gone away. So I will try to speak slowly and clearly as best I can. So I will apologize now ahead of time. I realize I haven't started my timer. Boop. So I know... <sighs> When to go. So, when we last left off, uh, we were reading with Yuri, Euro, Yuri. We were getting close to her. We seemed to be making her more comfortable around us. Uh, we then read everyone's poems. There were some long poems and big words. We didn't like the big words. But now I'm guessing this is the homework, and we'll go from there. So, okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room... Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I'm trying to do voices, I'm just trying to speak clearly. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? You won't need much more than a few decorations. Say has been working on posters, and I've designed some pam pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what's actually going to be. Uh, that doesn't tell us what. <laughs> but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, sorry, I thought you'd heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing. Uh. Uh, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the coolest part is we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite poems too. Says put it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Hee hee! Say, who has been colouring a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't. You didn't always start putting up these posters, did you? Uh, well, I did. Do you really think it's a bad idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to perform in front of a group of people like that. I, I agree with Nat. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No say. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Nat and Yuri... I've never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. Oh god, I know where this is going. I guess I kind of overlooked that, so I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each of us put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone in literature what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, oh my god, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we are in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. Oh my god, she's a right, but what's the word, Most motivational speaker and if it takes us to stand in front of the room for two minutes and recite a poem, then I know you can do it mm -hmm. remain silent, say looks worried, I guess that leaves me no choice, I agree I don't think it's too much to ask I think say and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members the least we could do is help out a little bit well, maybe, but mm. Looks like Nat doesn't have this, any arguments left. Uh, okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right, phew. Thanks, Nat. What about you, Yuri? Yuri, deject, deject, what the? <laughs> Dejectedly glares around everyone else, expectant faces, sigh. Uh, I guess I don't really have a choice. Aha, that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh, gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. 
We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No way! Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to recite it in front of strangers? I don't know recite it in front of strangers. Stop putting words there, Dane, you moron. Oh no! Don't worry, I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? Haha, <laughs> of course. Now let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. Oh my god. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Please let me read it out. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than... In, in what? More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line. She recites, bringing the words to life. <laughs> is this something she's done before, or is it simply a natural? Or is she simply a natural? God dang. I glance around. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Say looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Constipation? <laughs> Sorry. Finally, Monica finishes the recitation. Re the four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. <laughs> Wet the old whistle. Aren't you ready to get... Are you ready to go next, eh? <coughs> oh, crikey, that's made it worse. I'll go next. Oh, what? You always fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It, it's called... After... After image of a crimson eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts to read the poem. Just a moment ago, she... Partic partic particularly refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happened when Yuri got absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the shape, sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. God, why does I got like big fancy words too? Suddenly she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her as if she's bewildered, even herself. Aye, it's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me, me afterwards and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. Recon recognition. She does. Whatever. She deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. That was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Hops onto the chair. Cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah! Aha! Sorry, I giggled. Hee <laughs> hee. Say. It's a little harder than I thought. How do you guys do it so easily? Ah, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself like in front of a mirror. Or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. Say begins her poem. Somehow it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimless, cheery like Say is. It's, it's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think of much, think much of it. But hearing it come from Say's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. <laughs> Maybe this is what Say meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get a reaction more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Say finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Say. E even Super Dean liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Say. The atmosphere of your poem fits you really nicely. Oh, but I'm... <coughs> Excuse me. But it might be that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where your sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. <coughs> I thought I'd better mute myself there for my coffin. <laughs> well, that's why I've been practicing that kind of thing. 
It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. Hehe. <laughs> Next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little bit more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Nat? Hmm. Don't make me go before Super Dean. It's not like I can compare to you guys, compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Super Dean lower everyone's... Ah. Oh. Oh, she's kind of right. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much selection of what to read. What I wrote today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel... Terribly awkward. Oh, I'm suddenly very British all of a sudden. Where's my cup of tea? Everyone here makes me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I'm finished, I receive applause anyway. Ah, oh, pity applause. I love it. So, yes, lovely. Pity applause. Sorry, I'm not that good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that will improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right, then. That just leaves you, Nat. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Nat begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you looking at me? Oh, is that because... Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Nat takes a breath. I thought that was the poem was called Why are you looking at me? I was expecting that. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little un... Un... <laughs> un... I'm, I'm gonna guess a little uninfused. Yeah? Uninfused. God, I'm learning so many words. Her poem has rhyme and rhythm to it. It's Nat's trademark style. It works in surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down as it gives life to the poem. Nat finishes and everyone applauds. Yay! She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You better not make me do that again. Ah, well. Do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put whatever face on I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Nat. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it's so. Well, I guess in that case... You won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets to let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Ah, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone, I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try and write for poems tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nice so far. I'd like to see that continue. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day! I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as, say, a Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's for the sake of the club. And pressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go? Yep. Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? Hehe. <laughs> Jeez, guys, don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh... How am I ever supposed to respond to that? Respond? Respond to that. It's okay, Super Dean. You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. We are neighbours, technically, I'm guessing. I walk home with Say once more. Even though it's been a few days, lots of things have already changed. But today, Say is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Say. Sorry, I was spaced out. And no wonder. Hmm. I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean, Say fumbles her words. So let's just say that one day, Yuri asked to walk you home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, no. What do I say? What do I say? Fine. What can we do, huh? Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, given how hard it is to socialize, I would feel awful turning her down, so. Isn't she so beautiful and smart? That's nothing to do with what I just said. Ah, you admit it. Jeez. 
There's not even a, any point to speculate that something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I'd just like to think about it. It's not long now before you won't need me anymore, you know. Need you? Say, I can't figure out what you see these things in your head right now. How you see these things in the head right now. Sorry. Everyone is different. Nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm. If you say so. The conversation trails off and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take it away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival's only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Oh god, here comes a poem again. So right. Do I need to be sort of more clever with my words? Um, uncanny. Ah! Uh, frightening. Ah! Uh, contemplation. Ah, I'm just going for the big words right now. Uh, landscape. Ah! Uh, after. Uh, again, melancholy. Ah, uh, I've no idea what that says, but that one. Uh, eternity. Heaven sent. Aha. Uh, precious. Oh, she likes that one. Uh, portrait. Aha. Essence. Aha. Uh, in. There we go. Uh, unrequited. Oh, god damn it. In. There we go. Go back for the big words. Imagination. Uh, amazing. Back with despair. There we go. Uh, agonizing. Haha. <laughs> and. Destiny! It is my destiny! Oh god, we're back again. Oh man! And the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. Ah! You must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano? Well. Maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club won't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all writing to help out for the festival too. I can't wait for the festival! It's gonna be great! Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Nat? Well, yeah, I'm not talking about our party for the festival, but the whole day for the school. We get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sale all of a sudden. Monica, don't they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Uh, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean of all people? Because it's right in your name. Monica. Eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Ah, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as funny as Yuri or Say anyway. Excuse me. Where is Say anyway? Oh, there you are. Desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Say. Hand in front of her face. Eh? You spaced out again? Ah! Eee, sorry, don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Of course. Why wouldn't it be? I just feel like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. Okay. I'm fine, see? Big me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright, if you say so. I will only glance around Say before turning back towards everyone else, but the conversations are already disparate and everyone is in their usual activities. <laughs> Maybe I should ask Monica if you know, noticed anything about Say recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they might be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Super Dean, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Say recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a little downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Say, who is dragging a rubber arrays up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind. But I'm surprised. I'm not the one asking you, Super Dean. 
You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she never really liked this. She's always talked to me about anything that bothers her. But this time when I ask her, she's really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask you if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Are you sure about that? She seems like she wants to be left alone. <laughs> Are you sure? Maybe she's just having a hard time bringing up with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying maybe this thing on her mind is you, Super Dean. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but say talks about you more than anything else, you know? Eh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Say is always like that? She's always been full of sunshine? It's not any different not how she's always been? Hee <laughs> hee! You're so funny, Super Dean. Have you thought that maybe you were always seen her as cheerful? Because that she's just because that's just how she is around you? Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so just forget about what I said. I'll try I'll try talk to talk try to talk to her. So try not to think about it for now. Ah, alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she's she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to give her words out words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room where Say is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Say and gently talk to her, but she keeps her voice quiet so I can't hear from her. I sigh and sit down myself. Shush. I know Say told me not to worry about her and have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like one of I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. There's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? I glance around the room. Suddenly, I notice Yuri peering from her, over her book. But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realise that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. And we're going to end it there for now. So what is wrong with Say? Have I upset her yesterday by saying that I would walk home with Yuri if she ever asked me? I don't know, but we shall find out uh, next time. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Super Dean, out.